Grab a six pack, sit back, and prepare to laugh. It's Joe Gasher's podcast. podcast. Grab a six pack, sit back, and prepare to laugh. It's Joe Gasher's podcast. podcast. Grab a six pack, sit back, and prepare to laugh. It's Joe Gasher's podcast. podcast. Grab a six pack, sit back, and prepare to laugh. It's Joe Gasher's podcast. podcast. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 221 of the Drunk Dashers Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Tyler, and joining me, we have the man, the myth, the legend himself, the perfect 10, Sir Colonel Gables. What's up, buddy? I am doing quite all right, man. I have been really too much. I've been kind of in like an anxious mood as of late, you know. And and it's pretty much because I've been trying to itching into playing like something or other. I've only played mm-hmm. like a little bit of games this past week, but yeah, I've been so like anxious to try to get to my vacation stuff, and that's only a week away now. And it's like, ah, oh, god dang. It just makes me feel excited, but at the same time, it also. Uh, makes me really kind of bored in some retrospects you yeah. know <laughs> yeah God, i get because you want you want to save stuff for vacation yep but at the same time you want to play some stuff i get it i get it completely but but in the meanwhile though i have been i've been pretty much like on a binge for the last like couple months or so of like going through finding these little transformers and stuff like that you know, like how back in the day, like say the '80s or like the, bits, yeah, I think it was like the mid '80s that some Transformers actually started and stuff. I've been sort of on a fix where it's like I have been watching little bits of the old animated show and stuff like that because I really liked those robots growing up. So naturally, I want to go and see if there was any type of uh, older Transformers or something like styled after the ones that I would watch in my youth. And yeah, actually, there's they there is a toy line by Hasbro. Where it's like Transformers Generations. It's like a Titan Masters hmm. Returns sort of line. And what those are is they have different colors sometimes of uh, favorite past robots. They got classic robots from the Autobots and the Decepticons and stuff. I've been finding them and I've been really liking the end result of a lot of them. Like a few weeks ago I ended up buying like this big old like Transformers thing for uh, Optimus Prime and for Megatron and stuff and oh my god yeah the first time i opened up that uh that optimus prime and stuff it took me three hours to transform that damn thing into like (laughs) into like a spaceship and then like it's original truck form and stuff did you make us did you make the sound effect when we did it (laughs) (laughs) no but that'd be kind of funny if that actually did happen when i was doing that he was a mountain dew mountain dew vending machine now all of a sudden he's he's a truck dude what ended up becoming like two robots and stuff i bought i have gotten i kid you not i have gotten like at least five more random transformers over the past corresponding weeks they've been individually priced so it's like there are some that are for ten dollars or some that are for 15 and then there's like crazy ones like uh they're organized in like specific classes so it's like you have a deluxe class it's like sort of a little bit like uh less in terms of say transform and stuff those are like the 15 dollar ones or something like that then you have some at uh, the higher the one rank higher or some is the 25 dollar ones that i've actually found between like optimus and then megatron and stuff then you have a leader class i got my first leader class transformer yesterday with that big old sound wave dude this <laughs> is the this is the this is the decepticon robot that transforms into a gigantic fucking boom box with like a with a, uh, it looks like a gigantic, like, cassette boombox and stuff like that. Dude, I was excited last night, because when I went to Walmart Friday night, and then all of a sudden I found all these Transformers stuff that was, like, cut off by, like, half price and stuff. Nice. Dude, I end up getting, I get these four of these little robots and stuff like that, that are, like, uh, supposed to be, they are supposed to be these random little, and like, uh, little Transformers and stuff. That are they were like two fifty a piece, right? And they have like the various types of animals, like a T Rex. Uh, one of them was a T Rex. One of them was a lion. Then you have another that was sort of like a, a combination of a werewolf and a like a fucking pterodactyl or some shit like that. Then <laughs> then it was it was just kind of fun because you have all these little random little ones that 
let's be perfectly honest. Uh, these were originally like five dollars a piece, and nobody, none of the kids wanted to buy them. Probably because the parents were thinking to themselves, "Oh, hey, these pieces are so damn small, they're gonna lodge into the kid's mouth." Which I kid you not, they're no, that's not a fucking joke because these little robots that come with these little like uh, animal type of transformers and stuff, they are literally like, about the size of a fucking penny. <laughs> hmm. Their main purpose, though, Tyler, it's like. These things can transform into little robot heads that you can stick on to some of the deluxe class transformers that you buy for like fifteen dollars and stuff. So as it stands, I got three of these regular transformers, which were like ten bucks a pop, right? One of them was Bumblebee. The other one was uh, a, like a like a red car that's that almost looks like the Bumblebee one that I had. It's like Roadburn. His name was. It's kind of funny some of the names for this. Uh, these robots but uh, i had another one that is like a freaking it looked like a freaking dump truck or something like that wait not a dump truck but more like a miniature tank actually his name was brawn <laughs> almost like it's similar to braun strom but probably <laughs> is that the only thing you can do is this is this yell really loudly no man that'd be fucking amazing hmm. if the damn thing just yelled its name i would have laughed hysterically when transforming the damn thing probably like, broke probably like... would have broken something too <laughs> it's like a Pokemon you can only yell his name oh man there's those three and then there's like a couple of others that I actually had one of them one of them was is uh, named Chrome Dome <laughs> and basically this is like a gigantic this is like a one of the deluxe models I was talk, telling you about which are like about 15 these things these things were freaking crazy because uh, they're a little bit more intricate. They take like about 15, maybe to 20 steps or stuff in order for you to actually fully transform them. And uh, let me tell you something. They go from – this thing went from a robot to like a freaking car. And it took me like maybe a half an hour or so to go through and change the damn thing. But it looks freaking cool. The paint job is great. The, the modeling things, the plastic, they don't feel cheap. They don't feel like they're really flimsy. When you go like some of the older Transformers – some of them, like, have this thick, almost, like, metal to them, you know. These ones are a little bit lower in, in kind of, like, quality and stuff. But uh, I'm just glad that some of these Transformers, they don't have, like, uh, the type of things where you just pop things off and stuff and break things easily. <laughs> they have the little ball joints and stuff to where if you if you try to jam something wrong, they'll just pop off and stuff. So you can easily pop them back in and stuff and, like, uh, continue good. on. It's It's good. It's good. But yeah. uh, I think the last one of the little last ones that I had it's it's this this one was named Hardhead and it absolutely is pretty fun because it is a fucking tank. It's actually a big tank and stuff where you can put little little uh, guns and everything and all this other shit. And man, it's been a joy just going through and discover like just rediscovering Transformers as like a whole the old robots and all this other stuff. Cause it's fucking fun because like you get like uh, bits of vehicles transform into this other stuff, but. Uh, Anyway, it just leads me to say that yes, like well, yeah, last night when I was going through, I saw that sound wave, this leader class sound wave, which is like, I kid you not, like almost about twenty inches tall. <laughs> that damn hmm. thing originally was forty dollars, and I got it for like twenty. And man, nice. That thing had been sitting. I kid you not, it had been sitting unbought. Three copies of the sound wave for like about a couple months and they finally discounted and cleared it out <laughs> <laughs> so hitting that right spot man that has pretty much been the highlight of my week dude it's like i don't know why it's this you know with the whole gaming stuff sort of like grounding to a halt as of like right now in terms of releases i mean yeah we had splatoon 2 which happened last friday not like this past friday but like last week's friday Mm -hmm. It was, it has been sort of like a kind of a lull and void. I mean, there have been big, there has been like one big release. I think, I know you have played a little bit of, and you'll be discussing in just a moment. But uh, yeah, man, I've just been in the mood where I've been really interested in seeing what else has, what else I can get into before getting into the falls, like glut of games that are going to be coming out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's coming faster than uh, we all know. But Tyler, man, how have you been doing? Uh, doing all right. Um, you know, uh, kind of a busy week. Uh, I took Monday off work, so I ended up working, uh, you know, ten, eleven hour days to make up for that time. Yeah. Uh, 
So didn't have, didn't have as much time as I wanted to for like gaming and stuff. But uh, on the positive side of things, I um I got my extra life shirt in yeah. for this year, uh for making two hundred dollars or uh, raising two hundred dollars this year for extra life. Uh, so I'm up to five extra life shirts. I think I only ha- I don't even think I have maybe fifteen to twenty shirts and. <laughs> A third to a quarter of them are extra life shirts now. And then, uh, another thir- You're doing something another, right, Tyler. <laughs> yeah, another, another third to a quarter of them are wrestling shirts. And then, uh, another third to a quarter of those are um, dude video game shirts. You need so. you need to get yourself a Bullet Club shirt. <laughs> oh, dude, I would love one. I need I need to order one of those. Dude, seriously, uh, you should try to check out the Hot Topic sort of like a website, see if you can find one of them. I might do that. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to actually go to a physical hot... I'm not going to go to a brick-and-mortar one. But I, oh, I know, I know, I know. I know. One. Uh, I've been wanting to do that that shit, too, for a while. Just get some, like, a Bullet Club shirts. Or some from New Japan Pro Wrestling, dude. I mean, that's... Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, the Bullet Club one is... I think... I'm going to have to buy that. Damn it, now I'm going to have to buy one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so... my my t- I have, like... And then I have a few polo shirts for... The, to look like I'm a grown adult, you know? Yeah. Give the illusion that I'm a grown adult. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, but um, I don't know, you know, nothing too crazy going on. Uh, I've been more, I'm kind of like you, like, we're kind of like, July has been kind of a dead zone for uh, games, like, obviously, yeah, like, yep. Splatoon 2's out, uh, there's been a couple other stuff that's been out, but uh, um, just been kind of, pu- you know, going through stuff on my backlog, and really just jumping more, and like, shit have fell behind, like, TV-wise, so it's been more, I've been doing a lot of entertainment stuff, like, still, but... Uh, Started watching Westworld this week. Everybody was okay. raving about it um, beginning of the year, and then uh, finished Doctor Who last week. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of entertainment shit. I started watching a show called Ozark on Netflix. Yeah, um, it was pretty good. About a guy, uh, it's like Breaking Bad almost. Like guy, uh, uh, he he's laundering money for a Mexican cartel, uh-huh. and he has to launder uh, like five hundred million dollars in like five years. Uh, so he has to like move his family from Chicago to the uh, Missouri to do this whole thing. I only watched the first few episodes, but it's really good. I, I'm enjoying it. It's on Netflix. It's Netflix original. And I'm gonna start. I'm gonna go through Stranger Things here soon too before uh, before we get really busy with games. Cause I'm not gonna have time. I hear to nothing watch but good things about Stranger Things, dude. Oh, dude, you gotta do it. You got Do you have Netflix? Yes, I do have Netflix. You son of a bitch, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, watch it. Um, so yeah, I. Been doing that. Oh, and uh, we talked about last week Doctor Who. Uh, it's on all the uh, all the seasons except for the new one are on Amazon Prime now. Oh. so yeah. Uh. So yeah, gotta check that out. If you want, I can give you my login. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, probably. <laughs> uh, you can just watch them on there and whatever. Uh, just don't buy anything, please. Uh, <laughs> my credit card's on there, so don't buy anything. Uh, but um, yeah, no, I, I not too much going on in the world of Tyler. Uh, but yeah, I guess we can jump into gaming now. Okay. I don't have any cool collection. I did buy two Amiibos. You did? Amiibo. Yeah. I got a Bayonetta and I got the Pikmin one. Oh, God damn, um, dude. I have not been able to find those Amiibos anywhere. The new ones have not been coming into stock at my Walmart. I think they yeah, just you, finally say fuck it with the Amiibo stuff. I, I got, I just pre-ordered these ones like as soon as they popped up uh, I did, on I see. Uh, Best Buy's website, like few months ago when they first announced them uh i see that i see the splatoon one, two uh inkling ones pop up here and there yeah for like short bursts and they're gone so um do you see the news I mean, it's not really in our show notes but you see the news about the metroid um same return um amiibo what's going on with that people are pretty pissed about that right now really really this is actually news to me what has been going on with that amiibo okay so there's um so there's that metroid Return of Samus or Samus Returns or whatever for 3DS coming out soon. Yes. Uh, September. Uh, so they have put the the hard mode and some costumes or something. Uh, the only way you can play the hard mode and get those costumes uh, in that game is by buying the, uh, the dual pack of for Metroid. And it comes with, uh, I think, uh, uh, Mother, not Mother Brain, the little, the little baby one. A uh, little baby Metroid, okay. and then Samus himself. So people are pretty pissed about that. Um, huh. That is really weird. Why would you lock a difficulty setting inside of an amiibo? Yeah, and I think that's what people are mad about. It's like, well, costumes is one thing, but now we're talking about actual like game modes. 
You know, like, uh, Mario Kart 8, it's like you lock costumes for your Miis behind that. That's whatever. Well, but yeah. yeah now but now you're just and locking it, away a difficulty setting for no real reason other than a physical DLC, and that's not good. Yeah, and it's, it's on top of that, it's not even, like, I can, like, I thought the Master Mode thing is pushing a little bit for being paid DLC for Breath of the Wild. Yes. But you can at least see they made huge changes with the Master Mode for Breath of the Wild. Uh, from the regular game. Yes. Um, so, maybe not huge changes, but they made some good changes. And we don't know what the difference is going to be between hard mode and regular mode. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, and especially since the fact you can only buy the those in a dual pack, and it's 30 bucks, I think is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, I think 30 bucks. So, you basically you have to pay, if you want hard mode um, for this and some costumes, you have to pay, it's $30 DLC, essentially. $30? Uh, for, for this fucking, these Amiibo? Yeah, because it comes in a two-pack. Oh, my That's God. So, pretty so much... Separately. Okay, so let me get this straight right here. So, you have to pay a dual pack for these two Amiibo, which are like $30 in order to unlock mm-hmm. a couple of costumes and a hard mode to that yep. say, that Metroid game. Yep. That, man, I can understand why people are upset about that. That's just ridiculous. Yeah. I just I was just thinking about... I just heard about that the other day. People were... Yeah, it's, it's pretty shitty. Like, you know... We want more uses out of the um, the amiibo, like make them, you know, because they're cool to collect that in stuff. But like the the big thing was them, like around them was you can do shit within the game. Uh, I I was cool with the Wolfling thing that made sense because you had to play Twilight Princess and Twilight Princess well, comes yeah. with the Wolfling amiibo. Yeah, that makes sense to, to tie that in together with Breath of the Wild. Um, this one not so much. Uh, it's not like this amiibo comes with the game um no it does not come with the game and the worst part about it is they're locking away options in order to yeah and sent people to buy this amiibo dual pack just to allow you to have an option to play for a harder difficulty which in my personal opinion that is not a good thing to do to your two fans of that game because if you want you can go ahead and play other games where you could basically play a hard mode if you wish to from the get go, but no, you got to pay thirty dollars just in order to get a hard mode for a Metroid game. I mean, that's stupid. Yeah, and on top of that, it's not like a, an easily findable amiibo right oh, now. Oh, obviously it's not, not. It's not. It's not out yet, but I mean, even like the, just a pre-order it is a pain in the ass. Like I've seen it pop up a few times on Twitter. I was talking about last week, like um, I, I follow a few sites that like help, like they'll post one stuff like that comes up and i'll go to like i'll see it too late and i'm like ah shit because i i kind of want to get them because I, I want the the metroid one more than anything because i already have the other samus one yeah uh but yeah it's like and on top of that yeah because if you're a big fan of it and you really want to do that it's like it's not like you can just walk into the store and just buy this dual pack you know oh no like, and here's and that almost reminds me of like some of the amiibo that i have for breath of the wild and like uh the ocarina of time link amiibo as yeah. well that one's that one's ridiculous that's going upwards to about 80 dollars new inside the yeah. fucking thing that's stupid i, I can't even find <laughs> i can't even buy like i wanted all the zelda ones i can't even find the last uh three uh amiibo the, the three zelda amiibos they released in june i think it was yep like the majora's mask one and a couple i can't ones. find those either yeah i want those ones like i, want, I at least want the majora's mask one and it sucks you know yeah, I've, I imagine. I'm hoping eventually they'll be easily uh, easily able to buy. But yeah, eventually, um, hopefully. Yeah, you know we're in the news. Should we just keep going with yes, news? Yes, of course. Let's okay. do that. All right. So not there's been a there's been a decent amount of news this week, but like no big shit going on right now. So you know we're still in that doldrums of summertime. Um, but we'll go through a couple real quick, a couple smaller things. Uh, we don't go through this all the time. Uh, but figured mention it this week. Uh, Xbox Games with Gold and PlayStation Plus have announced their games, uh, their free games for next month. Uh, for Xbox, uh, for Xbox One, you're getting Slime Rancher and Trials Fusion. Trials Fusion. If you like the Trials games, the motorcycle game, where you're uh, going through incredibly hard. Hi, Tony. Uh, Tony's Tony's in here for his weekly visit during the podcast. Um, Trials Fusion. If you like Trials game, it's the uh, motorcycle game where you're going through like crazy obstacles to try to survive and then beat time trials. Uh, super fun game. I don't really know anything about Slime Rancher, but it's, uh, it's free. 
And then also Bayonetta and Red Faction Gorilla are free for the 360, which you can play on the Xbox One with the back game uh, backwards compatibility. Wow. Uh, Bayonetta. Uh, I, I, I actually have that game. I got that game for free when someone actually hacked into my account and bought a bunch of shit with my credit card. Really? My credit card, my debit card. Yeah, like probably six, six seven years ago. Uh, they bought like four or five games. And I, with the Xbox, and they, they, they gave my money back. And they fixed everything, but I got the I they, the games were still in my library, which is kind of cool. Uh, so that's actually a game I, I I've never I, I played Bayonetta way back in the day, and I only played like the, the the first level, and I really gave it um it's but time. haven't you played so, through Bayonetta two though? Yeah, I played I I, I beat Bayonetta two. Yes. Okay. Uh, when I first got the Wii U, that was one of the games I played. Uh, but I, I didn't really play Bayonetta, so I. If you, have, I guess I own Bayonetta one uh, twice now because I've added the Wii U because it came with it. Um, so yeah, but Bayonetta, everybody, a lot of people love that game. Um, so I would check that game out probably. And then Red Faction Gorilla came out 2008, 2009. Yep, that game uh, had a really big following behind it. it. Got really reviewed really well back in the day. Uh, all the destructible environments on Mars. Um, I don't think I ever played it, but uh, yeah, if you guys are into that. That's a thing. And then on PlayStation Plus, uh, this is kind of cool. I'm actually really excited, actually, about, um, like, a lot of times, PlayStation Plus games, I, I just add them to my library and don't even, usually don't even download them. Yep. Maybe a few games a year I'll actually check out. Uh, but this one I'm actually excited about for next month. Just Cause 3 uh, is going to be uh, free uh, for everybody on, I think, this coming Tuesday, August 1st. Um, crazy fucking hookshot game where you can just go through an open world. You can do basically anything you you want to do. You can do it. Uh, fly a plane, jump out of the plane, and hook shot um, to it or, or whatever. Uh, you can do that. Um, kind of whatever your mind um, will let you can think of in your mind, you can probably do in that game. Right. Um, it's from an insane level. And also Assassin's Creed Freedom Cry, which is a standalone DLC. They came out for Black Flag uh, way back when I was like one of the first oh, uh, DLC things oh. to come out for... Uh, um, for PS4, that is out. That's gonna be out. You actually play as I can't think of his name, but he was like your slave, uh, or he was. He was a former, not, not your slave. He was a slave, um, a former slave, in uh, Black Flag, and he was actually like your first mate on the ship that you ran. Um, so you could play that. I think it, I think it kind of goes through like he kind of tells his story. So actually, I, two really good um, uh, games coming out, or you know, yeah, games coming out for uh, PlayStation Plus um, next month in August. And then also, this one is coming for Vita, but it's also got crossplay, so you can download it for the PS4 as well. Is Downwell? Uh, oh yeah. I've heard everybody that uh, that's played the game seems to love that game. Uh, I heard it's incredibly challenging, um, but it's got a lot of good reviews behind it. So, uh, pretty good month for I think for uh, if you have an Xbox or a PlayStation. Yeah. Uh, this is actually check all the- it's actually a really rare occasion to where both services seem to have multiple games where you could probably play across the board right here without uh, having too much to gripe about i mean hell just cause 3 alone that game is like only a couple years old and that thing is probably going to be seeing play by me probably sometime soon (laughs) yeah yeah i'll probably check it out for uh um all the big shit comes out the end of august so i'm excited for especially freedom cry i'm really actually kind of pretty excited for that one um but yeah Cool shit coming out next month, so we have stuff to play. Keeping us busy till the end of the month when the real shit starts happening. Uh, moving on. So this is kind of something we talked about last week, uh, which is a huge, huge bummer for me personally, and I imagine for Gables as well and Justin. Uh, but I talked about uh, the uh, SNES Classic. The pre orders came out for, for Walmart. Yeah. And uh, I actually, like I mentioned, I got two pre-ordered um, for, through Walmart. And at that point, when we recorded on Saturday night, there was nothing coming out about it, about being an issue. It sounded like it was just a normal, hey, pre-orders are up. Um, come to find out, they released the, the, the link and the pre-orders up too early. Um, and they had to cancel all pre-orders, uh, which was a huge bummer. Um, yeah, that is. So, yeah, uh, it kind of came out so... Um, People were, I, I, it's funny, I've listened to a lot of podcasts this week, 
and a lot of people that pre-ordered it went through the same exact experience that I went through. Where, like, so they announced it, like, hey, this came up as a mistake, so there's going to be cancellation. People were saying pre-orders getting canceled. I think it came out, like, Monday morning or Sunday night that uh, people were, people's pre-orders were getting canceled. Justin even texted me. He's like, hear anything about your pre-order? I'm like, no, as far as I know, it's good. And then, like, Monday or Tuesday, I got an email saying that um, my pre-order was going from October is going to release on October 5th to actually it's coming out September 29th, which is the actual release date. And I'm like, oh, cool. Everybody's getting their shit canceled. But I'm just, my, mine just got bumped up a week. This is awesome. And then um, I finally got an email on, I want to say, Thursday night. I got an email saying that my order was, can- my, intro- my orders are going to be canceled. But I went and looked at them and they were still staying in process. And then a few hours later, they were officially canceled. Uh-huh. Uh, so, <sighs> what the fuck, Walmart? You know? <laughs> like, I'm not... Like, from a personal standpoint, I'm not upset about it because I'm not, like, super excited for the SNES Classic. I've talked about it several times. Like, yeah. my my real first love for gaming was end of PlayStation 64 area, uh, era to GameCube PS2 era. And I have a, a huge uh, nostalgia for Game Boy Game of Color, though. Um, so I'm not, like, this isn't something I'm, like, super excited for. But I'm, I'm more pissed off just because, like, I got these... Not for myself. I got these for you and Justin. Yeah, I know. And I'm like, and I've been kind of like having anxiety about you guys getting getting one. And I'm like, finally, when I when I pre-ordered, I'm like, oh, okay. I felt like a weight, like a little bit of a weight was lifted off of me. Like I don't like, like you guys, you're good. Justin's good. I'm good. Everybody's good. We all don't have to worry about these things uh, until we don't have to worry about. Them. We got them. We got. Them. We're getting one. We're getting them. We're right. all getting one, which is awesome. And then it's just kind of like, now I feel that now that weight is just back on, you know. It's like fuck. So now I'm like, I'm, I'm whenever I go on Twitter, I'm just like, I'm going to like my my uh, the first thing I'll do usually is I'll go on and like look at like my my uh, Twitter pages I follow, and I'm like, okay, is this any classic been announced or been up for pre-orders lately? <laughs> no. Whew. Okay. Whew. You know, uh, lower the lower the the heart rate a little bit. You know. Um, and now I'm just worried all over again about missing the pre-orders. And uh, I kind of just want the fucking pre-orders to come out. If there's going to be pre-orders. And just get them out there. Get them out of the way. If I miss them, I miss them. And if I, if I pre-order them, I pre-order them. You know, I just want to... I'm tired of waiting. You know, I was like, when's it going to happen? Is it happening right now? Are we missing... Because I'm recording this podcast as the pre-orders up. Am I missing it? Because that's what happened last week. We recorded it and I got, I got done recording. And bam! Or two weeks ago. Bam! Pre-order came up. Like I right after we got the recording, and I and I got I got them, you know. <laughs> it's like I don't know. Like I said, I'm not really mad personally, because uh, because of, of myself wanting one, just more pissed off because it's like two of my best friends in the world wanted them. Helps you guys out, we got them, and now here we are back to fucking square one. You know what I mean? And just in general, other people in general, it's like it just sucks. Like shit happens, I understand, but it still sucks. Yeah, I agree with you, man. That absolutely does suck because this is totally on Walmart's end where they botched that whole pre-order thing. Somebody accidentally switched on, like, uh, the pre-order thing for live, and then all of a sudden, without further notice, they probably got informed by Nintendo not too far, like, afterwards, and, uh, yeah, somebody got fired for that shit. (laughs) Probably. It was up for 40 minutes before it uh, actually uh, uh, got pulled, so... Imagine there's thousands of people that are probably pissed off right now. Because it sounded like anybody that tried to pre-order it got a pre-order like, uh, until it got pulled off. Like, So it wasn't just like, we're out of stock. It was just like, it just got pulled out. Right. Like, it wasn't just, yeah. So I, I know Troy, I talked to Troy a little bit on Facebook when it happened. And like he was, he had it in his cart. He had to go grab his wallet, put his information in. And by the time he put his information, the, the, the page got pulled. So. Yep. <sighs> fucking bullshit goddamn walmart destroying us i don't even shop at walmart anymore <laughs> i don't even go there and they still find a way to fuck me over you know what i mean oh yeah bullshit. yeah i understand that exactly i mean i've had bad experiences with walmart and gaming as well but uh at least for this case in point and stuff there's always the option of possibly going there like before the launch thing and then like uh possibly getting one huh yeah i just don't want to deal with that shit going to the store i just want like I just want to pre-order them. I don't want to sit there and, like, go to, like, call GameStop or Walmart and Target every fucking morning and, like, hey. Or, like, see on, like, line, like, 
Toys R Us is getting uh, Switch or uh, SNES Classics on Tuesday morning, and then have to worry about getting there and like taking time off work or whatever I want to do just to get it. It's too much of a hassle. It's one. Let me fucking pre-order one. Yeah, it is definitely um, too much of a hassle. Yeah, but uh, stick with with Nintendo. Uh, they kind of came out with their quarterly earning, uh, earnings earnings uh, this past uh, quarter Q Q one. Wow. Well, it's weird to me, uh, you know, with uh, the quarter for the quarter four being January through March. Yeah. Q one for the fiscal year two thousand seventeen uh, is April through June. Um, so they kind of came out and released a lot of a lot of news and information about uh, the sales for pretty much everything they released uh, this year. Yeah. Uh, so the the big one that everybody uh, I think a lot of people are excited about is the Switch. At this point, has sold 4.7, I think it's 4.71 million units. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, as of June 30th, uh, which is really well. I think it's slightly ahead. Uh, not more, more than slightly. I think it, I think they said the Wii U at this point, um, last year, or last generation, was like 3.92 or something like that. Yes. So almost a million ahead of where that was. And that came out in, you know, holiday season. And this came out, the Switch came out in March. March. So, looking really good. Uh, four months in, almost five million. You're looking at you've already sold about forty percent of what the Wii U did in four years. Uh, I think they ended up just. I think they ended up just below thirteen million. I think it was like twelve point seven or twelve point eight million uh, units sold. And the thing uh, is, it, think this thing is on track to beat the Wii U's first year selling sales right there because that was like the first year the Wii U sold like about five million something units. Oh really? I didn't know. I I I guess I haven't looked at the comparison charts. I just heard about the first quarter charts, but uh, yeah, that's bad. Uh, especially when you had two Christmases in there, um, and this hasn't even met the first Christmas. And I mean, you might you gotta imagine the Switch would probably be um, seven eight million range if it was easier to find right now. Yeah. Uh, it's just and it, not even Nintendo issue. It's just uh, getting the material to buy to make the fucking thing at this point. That's an issue. Um, but they've also sold 8.14 million uh, games for the Switch. Yep. I don't know if that's digital or physical only, but that's uh, I think I think it actually is uh, a digital and physical. Um, so that's really good. I don't I, I didn't see a comparison chart for the uh, for the um, Wii U, but I know at that point that the eShop wasn't up until I think uh, about four or five months after the console came out, uh, and then. Some other news came out uh, for that. Breath of the Wild is currently at 3.92 million copies. Yep. Um, but they're not saying that. I think that's com- that's pretty sure that's combined between Wii U and Switch. Uh, but they didn't break it up uh, to who has bought what. But kind of a big drop off. So you're talking, you're looking at about an 80 percent attach rate. But that's a big drop off for what last quarter when it was like 107 percent attach rate for the Switch. Uh, but still, I mean, selling pretty well. But like I said, I want to know what the Wii U and the, and the Switch individual sales are because uh, I'm curious how many people actually bought it for the Wii U. And I'm a little disappointed how low that number is being on two consoles. Um, I know probably out of that near 5 million people that bought a Switch, you could probably think 3, 3.5 million of those people probably owned a Wii U. So people probably just bought it for the Switch instead of the Wii U. But I'm just kind of a little disappointed. I wish the number was a little higher for the Breath of the Wild because that's probably going to be a lot of people's game of the year and probably a lot of people on this show's game of the year or at least in the top two or three probably uh and yeah like i said it's gonna be it's probably gonna be one one two or three for pretty much everybody that played that game it's gonna be their game of the year <laughs> uh so i wish more people I'm, I'm, I'm upset about it because more people should play that game yeah they should four million is not enough uh, <laughs> but i but think like, what led to this sort of drop off was maybe people finally getting switches because a lot of that attach rate for uh what was it last month or whatever the heck that hundred and something percent that's pretty yeah. much because of people buying the switch and wait not, not, not buying the switch but buying breath of the wild for switch but mm-hmm. not being able to buy the console so what this may actually be is something positive and that's been where maybe people maybe the reason why it's only at an 80% attach rate now is because probably people have bought more switches and in terms maybe there's a lot more that did not buy Breath of the Wild yeah possibly in terms of maybe just getting Mario Kart 8 Deluxe because it's a Mario game but uh 
hey, at least at this point and stuff like that, we know that people are buying Breath of the Wild at a high rate and still like yeah. getting switches and stuff. So that's good news. Oh yeah, four four nearly four million is on the ball cap. I think like Uncharted Four sold like nine million. Yeah, and that's on a console at this point. Uh, at, at this point, last fiscal year, in the first fiscal year, they sold about nine million copies. Uh, on a console that had almost at that point fifty million consoles out there. Oh, dude! Uh, yeah, so no. Really great. At the, I mean, that's the thing. About, Nintendo's always had a great attach rate for first party games. There's probably like Splatoon One sold over five million copies. Uh, on a console that at that point only had twelve million consoles out there, and like Mario Kart uh, Eight was about the same. I think a little higher actually. Smash Butter was like the four million range. Um, so 3D World Mario 3D World was I think about 5 million or so so those things always are have a their games always have a super high attach rate but uh yeah i just wish that's a game that more people should play that's all i'm saying uh, but like i said it's a hard console to buy and not a lot of people own a wii u so i mean what were you gonna do there uh another thing that came out mario kart 8 uh deluxe it's three and a half million sold and that game came out at the end of april uh almost as many uh copies sold as uh breath of the wild uh so that game, I mean, Mario Kart sells is a system seller and it sells like game bu- game busters. And that thing, so what I, essentially was a pretty much a uh, like a remastered port of the yeah. Wii U's thing, but it it has sold a lot more than the Wii U's. <laughs> yeah, oh well, not more. I think it's less than the Wii U was. Are you I sure? think the Wii, like I said, I think I think the Wii U was, version was about five million or so. Okay, five million. million. But that's definitely probably but going still, to be outdone. Yeah. Yeah, oh, three and a half million sold to a console that has four point seven million out there in the market. Holy That's shit! That's an incredibly high attach rate. Yep. Uh, pr- you know, probably about the eighty percent now range as well. Uh, and then I think a pretty um, surprise, not too surprising, I should say, but uh, kind of cool that in the first two weeks it was uh, it was out. Arms came out like June sixteenth, and between the sixteenth and the thirtieth of June, so two weeks on the market. Sold 1.18 million copies. That's really successful uh, for that new IP. Yeah. So their Nintendo is a, is two for two, I think, so far, and uh, new uh, uh, IPs with Splatoon and Arms so far. Uh, we talked about Arms last month when it came out. Um, so hype about that, and especially on a console where like people want games to play. Uh, Arms is doing really well. Uh, so that's really cool. I'm cur- I'm curious how it's still doing though in July. I like to. It wasn't in the top ten, I don't think, uh, so far. What we've seen for the month of July uh, for sales. So I'm curious how it's doing there. I, I mean, not July, June. I don't think. It was, I don't know if I can't remember if it was in the top ten or not. Uh, so I'm curious how that's doing. And then last but not least, uh, so far in the first week in Japan, uh, Splatoon Two sold six hundred seventy thousand copies. Wow! Just in Japan. Uh, so. It's probably a million seller at this point. Uh, or not the first week. This is like the first weekend it was out. Uh, now it's been out for a week. I'm curious what... Uh, uh, you got to imagine, probably a million at this point. I think it said they sold through 70% of their shipped, co- uh, shipped copies so far in Japan. 70%? Yeah, almost 70%. I think it was like 67 wow. or 68%. And that's not including Europe, Australia, North America. So that's easily another million seller they have, they have on their uh, hands right now. So Nintendo has sold... Four big, big um, first-party games for their Switch, and all four are million sellers, and they hit their million sellers immediately. Um, wow. So, good numbers so far for the Switch. Uh, and only good things to come. They still have a lot of shit coming later this year with uh, Mario and Rabbids, uh, Mario Odyssey, Final of the Warriors, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Two, and also the remake, uh, and also the remaster thing of that Pokken tournament thing as well that comes out. Oh yeah. Yep, comes out in September, and we're, then uh, we are yeah, potentially September. seeing maybe a couple more million sellers just come and release in this year. That's just crazy good for Nintendo yeah, as a company I mean, now. Yeah, you, you look at like Pocket Tournament sold over, I think, almost two million copies. Yep, on the Wii U, on a, and it sold yeah. more. <laughs> it sold more than Street Fighter Five, which is on a console with fifty million. Uh, <laughs> it did sell more than so, Street Fighter Five. <laughs> uh, so you can tell there's there's a loyal fan base to Nintendo. And uh, from everything I'm hearing, it's a great game. It's just the content was the biggest issue. Um, so, but yeah, uh, that's awesome. I'm, I'm happy to hear 
so far Nintendo's doing really, really well. I think their revenue uh, was like 1.4 billion. Profit was 174 million just for the quarter, uh, which is incredibly impressive, especially where they were last year. I think they were, I think they were, oh, I, I think they actually, I can't remember if they like they lost a little bit of money. Yep. They made a few million, a few million dollars at this point last year, which makes sense where they didn't, they had a dead console and no games coming out for it. So. Yep. Uh, and they, they didn't spend a lot of they didn't spend a lot of money, so that helps. You know, they spent, like I, said, I think it was a, they they spent millions of dollars in marketing and making shit and releasing games, uh, and they didn't they, the, the, all those games that were on the were on the payroll last year, or a lot of those games are out now. So that's that's good. Um, so so far things are going well, and I hope they stay that way. I hope this is not a flash in the pan, and it keeps going. Everything we've seen so far with E three and shit coming out later this year. Doesn't look to be that case, but uh, seems like only good things coming for uh, the Nintendo Switch and Nintendo 2. Uh, but moving on to uh, might be our last topic uh, of the day. And that's always a topic, but just kind of overall conversation. Uh, hey, Pikmin came out uh, Friday. Yeah. Uh, right now, sitting on Metacritic at a 68. Uh, it's coming for the 3DS. Uh, I'm curious, are this, was this the game you're looking forward to? Is this the game you're thinking about getting? Well, personally, I probably am not going to be picking it up anytime soon, only because I'm kind of waiting for the Metroid game to come out. <laughs> yeah. But I do think it's going to... I think it's like a okay game. It looks all right, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was, it was a game I wasn't going to pick up day one, but I'm kind of bummed about that the reviews are what they are. Like, nobody's saying it's a bad game, but nobody's saying this is like... Everybody's saying it's it's a platformer, uh, and it's just kind of going through the motion kind of game where it's just like the puzzles are incredibly simple and it's not even like trying to figure them out. It's just like, Oh, I gotta do this. And you gotta go just do a, B, C, D to do the thing you need to do to get to the next section. So kind of bummed about it. Um, you know, this is a game like the Pikmin games always sound really cool to me. And I, I tried playing Pikmin one back in the day and I even tried pick, playing Pikmin three on the Wii U it's a game I've never really been able to get to. Honestly, a lot of it's do with, with with anxiety, and I get like fucking like my it drives me nuts. Like I'm on a time I want to explore what I'm doing, but I'm also with the time crunch. Yeah. I'm, like, fucking like freaking out, and uh, so I just haven't <laughs> been able to get into them because of that. It's like with like Lego games. Like my OCD drives me nuts because I want to collect every fucking uh, little Lego brick that that falls and like break everything that's breakable. And this game's just like there's so much shit I want to do. But I'm like, I only got like 20 minutes to get to this, this part and get it back to my ship. Um, <laughs> so I was actually kind of like looking forward to this one. Uh, just being a side scroller and it's not a time limit game. It's just kind of like, it's just levels and Nintendo is pretty good about platformers. And come to find out that it's just meh. I'm not surprised about it because we're, we're at that stage with um, 3DS where it's just like, you're going to get a lot of B, C level games. You're looking at like, yeah. you know, Pikmin. Uh looking at Pokemon Ultra Moon, Ultra Sun, where it's just basically an expansion. Samus, it, uh, Metroid Samus Returns is, is just a remake. Um, not just not discrediting these games, but they're not like, we're not getting triple A 3DS games anymore. So, But I was I was still hopeful about this game and just kind of find out that it's, it's meh. A little bummed about. So, uh, maybe uh, we'll get a, I, I'm hoping this wasn't the Pikmin 4 that Miyamoto was talking about. Remember we talked about a couple years ago. They said Pikmin Four is basically done. Um, I'm hoping this isn't the Pikmin Four they're talking about. No, this is definitely not the Pikmin Four they're talking about. Only because, for one, this is not like a mainline Pikmin game. This is, looks like a spinoff, sort of subsidiary to like the actual franchise in and of itself. Yeah. But uh, Pikmin Four, what Miyamoto is probably referring to, is probably something similar along the lines of how Pikmin Three and the other games were originated from. Potentially, the concept of it's probably done, but the game execution, we probably won't see it for another couple of years. Yeah. The, the only reason I think that, though, is just because, like they said, they said it was almost done. Yeah. And we haven't heard any news about a Pikmin game for the Switch. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I would think that we would have heard about one um, by now or we'll hear about one here soon. Um, maybe January, maybe we'll hear about one. I don't know. I, don't, I guess I don't really know how well Pikmin games are. Uh, commercially, maybe uh, I know, maybe by the end of the year we possibly may hear something in regards to it. Who knows? But uh, yeah, I guess that could be. It might be like the the holiday 2018 game or something because I um, they kind of 
made some comments uh, that Metroid probably isn't coming out in 2018, which I don't think anybody really. Yeah, that's hard for Switch. Is definitely not coming out in 2018. <laughs> yeah, po- Pokemon probably isn't either. At least Metroid Prime Four we got a graphic for, and Pokemon uh, RPG are like, yeah, we're making it now. So you gotta imagine both those games are probably a, f- a good chunk of way out. Um, yeah, like I said, kind of bummed about it. Uh, I was hoping we do better. If I could see, if I find it like a Black Friday kind of sale, like twenty bucks, maybe I'll check it out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, for forty bucks right now, gonna hold off on that. Um, but moving on to um, what we've been playing. All right. Uh, is it cool if I start? Go on ahead, Tyler. All right, thanks, buddy. Uh, I talked about last week. Picked up Splatoon two. Uh, haven't really played it much since we recorded last week. I played it um, for a couple days afterwards. I think I'm like level eight or nine now, and I did a few more uh, of the single player levels. It's not grabbing me like Splatoon One did, and we were talking about a little bit before the show. Um, where I think going in with Splatoon, like I like the Splatfest is what sold me on the game, um, but the like I'm going into it, I didn't expect this, the single player to be what it was. Uh, where it's super fun. I think it ended up being like my number four or five game of the year that year. I think it was like 2015. Um, so. I go into. I think I was just going into this one with a lot more expectations, and I was actually like really excited about this game, and uh, really looking forward. And I talked about it a lot before the game came out. I was really looking forward to a single player, and it's not like I said, it's not grabbing me like the first one did. Uh, there's, no, it's just feel. It feels like more like I said. It's like Splatoon 1.5. It's just more Splatoon. Uh, like I said, not a bad thing, but uh, I guess personally. I wasn't as ready as I thought I was for another Splatoon game. Like, it definitely was grabbing me, like, uh, over the weekend where I was like, oh, I'll play one more game. Oh, I'll play one more game. Oh, I'll play one more game. Like, all of a sudden, it's like, it's been like an hour. I'm like, holy shit. I just played like 15 games in a row. That's Splatoon. I meant to play, uh, play like a few games to turn it off. Um, so, but I haven't, like, I haven't felt the urge to go back to it, keep playing it uh, like I was last weekend. Um, but the game that I haven't played that has definitely pulled me away from Splatoon 2. Is a game I talked about last week. I, I kept calling it Pyre, but it's actually uh, um, it's actually pronounced Pyre. Pyre, yes, uh, it's fire with a P. Um, P Y R E is how it's spelled. Uh, Super Giant Game made this for the they're popular for Bastion and uh, Transistor, two games that I love very very much. Uh, Bastion was one of my favorite games of last generation. Uh, definitely one of the best uh, like downloadable games, um, like Xbox Live, PSN games. That come out uh, last generation and transistor was a really really good game that came out um i think towards the beginning of the generation this generation um they didn't really get the love that bastion did um but it's still a really good game and i think a lot of people uh missed that one but i think it did come out for free eventually uh, i think both games actually came out for free on ps4 uh over the last couple of years for P- playstation plus um but this game super giant games is uh has has kind of advertised it as it's the biggest, the, their biggest game yet, and it seems so far to be true. It seems like it's a longer game, uh, and it's totally different than uh, the other uh, Transistor and Bastion, where those games were kind of a top-down uh, hack and slash s type of game, but with a really cool story and a great art design. And they kept the art design, which I I'm cool with and I love it. And the music in Super Giant Games has always been excellent. Like I actually own the soundtrack to Bastion on iTunes, and I I, I, I remember that game came out. I was at I, at that time my work. I was at I, I listened to my my iPod and I just listened to that fucking soundtrack like all day. I just kept listening to that uh, that song uh, or uh, that album. Uh, so Game Pyre, uh, this game is more of it's kind of a slower paced game where it's more like a lot of text based um, where like you're just reading a lot. There's no, uh, there's no real voice. There is some voice acting. There's like a guy that like speaks to you from the, from the, uh, and kind of, he's kind of like the guy that kind of uh, does a tutorial for you, explains the game, the rules to you. He's kind of an announcer as well during the actual court game parts of it. But the rest of it, there's like a made up language kind of thing. And it sounds almost more like Sims talk. Uh, and kind of the core concept of the game is that you are, this person, you're in the in the uh, I think it's called the downwell or de- not downwell, down fuck or it's called down something. But basically, you're like you've been exiled to this really crappy, uh, shitty uh, part of the the world you're in. And there's like the Commonwealth, which is like where the nice area. And he got kicked out. I don't really know the story. I don't know if it's gonna be told about why he's there. But 
you meet these other people and it's kind of a big deal the fact that you can actually read and there's this book um and you're reading this reading the stories of this book and they find out about this kind of tournament it's called the rights um and if you win this tournament you get to go back to the commonwealth and so these these three characters you meet at the beginning um have been like they've all been exiled and they're all kind of just trying to survive and they have this wagon and for some reason they think they're called the night wings now i've only played like three hours of so far so the story i'm still developing these characters and figuring out like their background um but like i said they think you're the night wings because this wagon you have and i don't really know why we have this wagon or why they think you're called the night wings but they're this big huge deal um in in this world and what you're doing is you go to like these certain sections and like this this fucking thing like this ball orb thing falls from the heavens the or from uh the sky and you play this game it's not i don't know if the name is exactly if it's called if the game of the game is called rights or if maybe it's called pyre i'm not really sure but kind of the, the core concept of the game is that there is 3v3 um and there you each have a goal and you know, with 100 points and you can kind of mix and match up. I have five characters in my party right now, and you have to select three every game, and they level up. There's still some there's some RPG elements with some skill trees and stuff, and some uh, things you can buy to uh, give them better perks. Uh, but so the, the the core the key of the game is to get their goal down to zero points uh, first, and each character has different skill sets. Like there's some that are like fast, uh, some that are bigger and stronger. Um, and there's like another one. There's like another characters that are like kind of like middle ground. There's another one that can actually kind of f- that can fly a little bit. Uh, and there's another one that can kind of like dash. And that's just what I meant so far. There's, I know there's more characters and more things going on. Uh, you'll meet later on. But uh, so kind of thing is like each character has an aura around them. And it's like this circle that goes around them. And if you have the orb in your, if, if you have, um, oh, you can only move one character at a time. I should mention that. Uh, and you control all three characters. So, um, if you want to, you just press X to um, switch between them, and then uh, you move you move around to the map. And if you have the orb, if you have possession of the orb, your aura goes away, and that's thing that protects you. So if you get if you run into a person's aura on the other team, you uh, you are um, you're basically taken off the map for like ten seconds. And so that makes the two v three thing, and you can also make it so like if all you can eliminate the entire team, and all of a sudden you have an open net like hockey or something. Oh, and yeah, so it's kind of cool in that sense, and it's a lot of strategy behind it. Where like person that I like to have like the I like to have my my big strong person stay at the at my goal and block it because like, basically the bigger you are, the bigger your aura is. But if you actually make it to the goal, there's a couple options you can do. Uh, where if you, you can run into it and like kind of like a slam dunk kind of thing really and you do the most damage and the bigger you are like I said the, the more damage you can do to it like so if you're the big person you can do 30 but you move super super slow so it's incredibly hard to do especially when there's no protection and these guys can just run up and hit you with no problem um, so I, I like to use like a couple fast people on my team and I'll like I'll combo those two and I'll um, I, it's been working, working pretty well for me so far and I'll like if you but you can you can like I said you can run to the net and you can do the max damage with that character, but you are taken out of the game until you score again. That character is off the map, uh, so now it's two v three. Um, or you can actually like throw it like almost like a jump shot in basketball. Yeah. And the longer you hold the circle button, the more points you can do. The more the more damage it will do. Uh, and the longer the farther it will go. So if I'm like right next to it. I can uh, just tap the O button and just shoot it in, but it might only do one or two bits of damage. But I get my character back, and I don't lose a character. So I can make it 3v3 again. Uh, so there's a lot of strategy that goes in it. That's a really deep game, surprisingly, for um, for what this game is. Uh, and for really kind of being the backdrop to this game. It's not like the the key element. Like I said, I'm only, like three hours in. I, I heard it's about a 10-hour game to complete the campaign. Um but in the three hours, I think I've only played like eight or nine games, and the average game maybe takes four or five minutes. So I've spent the vast majority of my time uh, talking and traveling through this world and a lot of character development. Uh, but the, the, the characters and the story are not hitting me as well as I think Bastion and Transistor did. 
But I think those games worked really well where you're playing the game and you're learning a lot about the world and the characters at the same time. In this one, it's a lot of information, like a lot of information dumps, and then there's a game. And I uh, I heard the deeper you get into it, it kind of turns a little bit and gets, uh, it's more like 70 30. Excuse me, where there's more game than there is uh, uh, story, which I'm looking forward to because I'm really, really, really loving this game. I don't know if I, I'm not at the point yet where I'm going to say it's better or worse than Bastion or Transistor. Uh, but it's definitely, uh, I'm, the game is awesome and I, I want to keep playing it. I kind of want to just, I, I just, I wish there was like, I would be totally cool if there was like a Rocket League type of game where someone just released that game and I, I could just play that game forever. Like, uh, like it's so much fun uh, playing. And like the, the one downside is, so they have a PvP, PvP mode where you can play against another person, but it's not online. It's uh, just couch co-op only, uh, which is a huge bummer. Because I would love to just hop online and play with people in this game. Because it is, uh, it's incredibly fun. Um, I, like, I was a little concerned going to this one. Because like I said, I love Bastion and Transistor. But it's so different than anything they've ever made before. Especially since they've been super giant games. I know like they were big into... like This was like kind of their big thing. As they were uh, Before they were super giant games, They uh, a lot of these people made adventure games like this like similar to more like a secret of monkey island kind of games or uh things you usually see from double fine uh, a lot of story driven games um so this is kind of more back to the roots um but like i said really fun game uh i would recommend if to anybody that you should check this game out uh especially if you liked uh this the the past games they made great art design fantastic music uh, they knocked out of the park for those two again, and I think the gameplay is incredibly fun. So that's kind of what I've been playing. What have you been playing, Gables? Well, I have been playing a little bit more Persona 5. Persona 5 has been sort of an interesting experience because I am to a point where I'm inside the first dungeon and I'm trying to figure out like some of the bits of the terrain of this first dungeon. Now, last week I had said a little bit in regards to how you could talk to particular types of uh, demons and stuff like that to try to coerce them on your side. I kind of went into a little bit more detail when I was doing my last playthrough of it, which I think was like either Monday or Tuesday this week. So quintessentially that it is a lot more streamlined than it is like inside the uh, first two Persona games of that type to where basically... Those two games had it so you had individual characters that could like talk to like talk to them and like uh, get items, get like little bits of uh, like currency or even like request their aid or something like that through their own type of like persona sort of card and stuff. But uh, that's been sort of replaced inside this game in terms of maybe one or two dialogue options, which honestly it's a lot easier to. It is a lot easier to try to go through that process, but at the same time, I'm discovering that there's different types of texts, like multiple types of texts and stuff like that for one creature. So you may expect to like ask the same sort of questions, but all of a sudden another option pops up and it kind of confuses you. <laughs> <laughs> so I have personally... I went through the first sub-boss inside this uh, first area... And it was basically a demon sitting on a damn toilet and stuff like that. <laughs> Which, that, that was kind of an interesting experience because basically he, this demon here was weak against uh, fire-based attacks. I don't know why, I don't know how, but uh, I was able to find a card that would give me the fire attribute. So not only did I have that, but I have another party member on my team that knew how to use the fire element. And so that ended up becoming a sub boss fight that uh, lasted maybe for about a good solid four or five turns where that could have been really bad if I did not have that at that time so it's already shown me elements that maybe I need to look consult a guide before I even consider getting deeper into this game <laughs> because here's the thing inside of persona games there are these little tidbits that you will miss and if you do miss them, I mean, you're going to be having a difficult time trying to complete some of these type of dungeons. So, for this quote-unquote dungeon, I've already come across various stealth elements, which 
hey, the stealth elements sometimes can be pretty good, but uh, because I'm still new at them and stuff, I'm still getting destroyed by random enemies. <laughs> mm. And that's just the thing. At least inside the stealth situation and stuff, you could press, like, I believe it's the... I want to say the L3 button on the PS4 controller to where you can you can scan your surroundings and you can actually see if an enemy is stronger than you or not. So how that works is if, say, if the color of an enemy is sort of like a light color, sort of like a bluish tint, I would think, that means that the enemy is weaker than you. If it has a yellow tint, it's the same level as you, and if it's red, then the enemy's considerably stronger, and you need to avoid that enemy at all costs. So I have definitely come across areas where, in this first dungeon thing, this thing has lasted for quite a bit of time, mind you. So I've come across enemies to where it's basically been that, where they're, they're a little bit more tougher than normal. I have been using quite a few bits of recovery items and doing this and doing that. I am towards the, I believe, the last main checkpoint area before progressing on. <laughs> but now the enemies are starting to get a little bit more tougher, so I'm just trying to not back trace any steps, but I'm trying to considerably try to just take my course of action and stuff of what I want, how I want to pres like go forward next. So I'm just trying to plan out before I go and face off against the uh, final, the main final boss for this first area. And I have to admit, though, there are elements of this game that are really fun, and it's really interesting, where you can take on a few enemies, you can earn some of their Persona cards, you could go ahead and fuse the different Persona cards if you really want to and stuff. That element's been unlocked, it's finally been unlocked for me. I mean, I went through the area where now I can actually unlock different types of weapon shops, like the option to fuse Personas and stuff like that. Yeah, so in... Opposition to uh, what I played during last week, there are more options that are presented to me now to where I have the I have the way where I can buy more particular types of medicine, more particular types of uh, weapons like guns and like uh, knives, swords, stuff like that, different types of armor, different types of accessories, and I also have the option to establish more social links. So how the social links work essentially is you make friends with random characters you encounter in the game and each time you fill up a particular bar of the social link which rates it from like a 1 to 10 the further you are to 10 the best you have a better chance to creating a stronger persona of that particular type so let's say let's say you have an arcana type of fool which basically that's uh, the one that you have between yourself and this uh, this dude that's inside the the dude that helps you fuse these personas. It's called like the Velvet Room, to where you have this guy called Igor or something like that that can help you fuse different types of persona into like one particular being. You can fuse between two to five types, but anyway, by doing particular things inside the game and in, in order to help increase your social link with that particular person, the stronger your persona will become. So say if you max out a social link, you will create a level, t like basically a level 10 social link fueled like persona to where that will be the strongest possible in sort of that aspect in collaboration with how high of a level you are currently. So there is quite a lot of depth. I mean, obviously for a, a big old like persona game, there are, are a lots of elements of strategy there is a lot of things you could possibly miss but i'll tell you what i haven't been too frustrated with the game so far like i said before it's been like about seven hours now i've basically have spent seven hours since i've uh, opened up the game and stuff and i've experimented to and from like to and fro with different types of things i really love the intro to the game <laughs> I really love the different characters that I've encountered so far, and the story for the first area of it is just, I think it's really interesting, in my personal opinion. So, other than that, though, that's pretty much what I have been playing for this week, other than, like, random Rocket League shit, pretty much. Nice. Because that's basically <laughs> been my go-to game. <laughs> Understandable. Uh, well, cool. 
Well, I'm glad you're still enjoying that game. Yeah. You only got 180 more hours to go until you beat it. Oh, yeah, um, I know. Give or take. <clears throat> but yeah, I think that might actually do it for the show this week. Uh, so I want to thank you guys so much for listening. If you want to hear more from us, we're on Facebook. We have a page in group. It is Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. So like and join us on there. On Twitter, we're at Drunk Nerds Pod. Follow us on there. Best places to go for if you want to hear news about when the podcast is up. Also on YouTube, uh, Drunk Nerds Podcast. Uh, subscribe to us on there. Podcast goes up on there. Uh, so if you do listen to us on there, even if you're not, just go to our YouTube page and uh, give our uh, show a like. Really appreciate it. Good way for people to see our show. And it just helps us all. Makes it feel good in general. Yeah. And um, also on iTunes, where the show is obviously on there. Um, so... <clears throat> Lose a five star review, four star is fine as well. Uh, write a review out too. That's a, that's actually even better. Uh, more people will see that than just a general five star review, and we'll even shout you on the show if you do. Uh, and then also on Twitch at Drunk Nerds Podcast, uh, follow us on there. Yeah, follow. <laughs> and uh, we're, 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 we're doing some talks about doing being better about the streaming. We've been really all over the place about it, and we're trying to figure out a way where we can be a little more regular about that. Um, so hopefully here in the coming weeks we'll have some news about that um but other than that i want to thank you guys so much for listening i was your host as always i was tyler and i have been colonel gables so until next week everyone enjoy yourselves play yourself some games and above all else stay happy and good night <laughs> party on wayne party on darth garth <laughs> darth garth darth <laughs> Whoa. Darth that's Garth. A weird, that's a Star Wars Wayne's World mashup I didn't know I wanted. Oh my fucking god. That comment was so stupid they called it for Lissify. Anyway. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. Party on Wayne. Party on Darth Garth. <laughs> and we're to me beers there anyways we're on itunes now so go on there check us out and if you like us leave us a review and we'll even shout you out and jack will send you his credit card number <laughs>